Bill Cosby is still one of the most controversial figures in the entertainment business. He was known as America's dad for decades, and his name used to make people think of warmth, laughter, and family values. He was a comedian, actor, and philanthropist who broke down barriers and touched the lives of millions. Then, all of a sudden, more than 60 women come forward with shocking facts that covered decades of making people. Not being aware of it, intimate attack, and abuse. When these women were no longer hidden by Cosby's strong image, they brought their claims to light. As our investigation into the comedian's life continues, we uncover more shocking new facts about him that give us new perspectives on his very public and controversial life and work. When the first charges were made, what really happened behind the scenes, and how Bill fell from power. Cosby's problems can be traced back to 1965, when a lot of accusations were made against him. At the time, though, no real action had been taken against him. It was Christina Rooley who first said that Bill Cosby knocked her out and beat her up in his Beverly Hills home in December 1965. She later came forward in 2005 and, in the case of Andrea Constan, she was called Jane Doe No. 12. Additionally, she said that she had told both her daughter and her boyfriend about what happened in the 1980s, which gave her story more weight. For the same reason, Joan Tarshis told freelance writer John Millward that Bill was accused of assaulting her in the early 1980s, but John refused to write anything about it. Victoria Valentino, a Playboy playmate, said that Bill Cosby did. An intimate attack was shown on video in a 1966 interview. When this secret came out, the conversation was supposed to be about writing an article about the lives of Playboy models that had never been published. Lachelle Covington, who was 20 years old, made a criminal complaint against Bill Cosby on February 1, 2000. This was said by Detective Jose McCallion of the New York County District Attorney's Special Victims Bureau. Lachelle said that on January 28, 2000, at in his Manhattan apartment, he tried to put her hands down his pants before letting her see him. She also said that he tried to put his hands down her pants and grabbed her breasts. When asked about this, Bill strongly denied it, saying that she was lying. The report was then sent to the district attorney by the New York City Police Department. However, after some private discussions, it was decided not to press charges. A former Temple University worker named Andrea Constan came forward in January 2004 to say that Bill Cosby had raped her and kissed her. This was only a few years after the first accusations. At first look, this seemed like just another accusation. But she would end up being the one who brought him down. It wasn't until February 2005 that the district attorney for Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, said there wasn't enough solid proof to bring charges. Andrea didn't give up on getting justice, so in March 2005, she filed a civil claim and named 13 people as possible. Witnesses in case of a court case. In November of the next year, Bill reached a secret settlement outside of court to keep the case from getting worse. When it was found that charges were not being pursued in the Constan case, the only woman mentioned in that case, California lawyer Tamar Lucier Green, came forward to accuse Cosby of knocking her out and assaulting her in the 1970s. This didn't get much attention, though, because Cosby's lawyer was quick to dismiss the claim throw out any relationship that might exist between the two. A witness named Beth Ferrier, who went by the name Jane Doe, told the Philadelphia Daily News in July 2000 that he tainted her coffee in 1984, and when she woke up, some of her clothes were undone, which suggested that something had happened while she was sedated. According to Sean Upshaw Brown, Bill Cosby admitted to having an affair with her in the 1970s. Brown also testified in 2000. Five National Enquirer that he knocked her out and sexually assaulted her during their last sexual contact. 
She is said to be the mother of his daughter, Autumn Jackson, who is not his biological child. It was found in 1997 that Autumn had extorted money by threatening to put the charges in the Globe newspaper. The claims made by Andrea Green and Ferrer, who all told the same story. Being put to sleep and being raped were written about in depth in an article by Robert Huber that came out in Philadelphia Magazine on June 9, 1996. After being told the serious charges against him, Robert said that his lawyers had pushed the case to the back burner, where it was only simmering. He said that it might not amount to anything, but it could also boil over and kill him. The title of the piece, Dr. Huxtable, Mr. Hyde, was a pun that used both the Jekyll and Dr. Hyde personality disorder and Bill's role as Dr. Cliff Huxtable on The Cosby Show. This piece also talked about Barbara Bowman, who read Andrea's story and promised herself she would not keep quiet anymore. The magazine wrote about Barbara's similar claims of using illegal drugs and assaulting her partner in bed in its November 1, 2006 issue. Bowman says that two things happened. It was in the early years of 1986. She had just turned 18 and was trying to make a living as a model and actress. He became her guide and friend after her agent put them in touch with each other. She said she got away from his attacks and went back to Denver, but she couldn't get away from the damage he would do to her job for not following him. What happened when things really started to go crazy if these claims were signs of what was to come? Hannibal Buress's words on October 16, 2014, something unexpected happened. Something happened that made people pay more attention to Bill Cosby's claims than to other cases. Bill was known for putting down young black men's dress choices and way of life. Hannibal Buress talked about this in his Philadelphia stand-up comedy show. Hannibal attacked the actor's public moralizing, and to counter nature, he joked that he sexually assaults women. That being said, he wasn't really the type to judge other people. People in the crowd seemed to think what he said was funny so he told them to Google Bill Cosby intimate assault when they got home. Once it was posted on the Philadelphia website in October, word quickly spread about the show magazine. He had been doing the same thing every day for six months without much success. Many newspapers wrote in-depth stories about how the media became obsessed with the subject of how Bill kept up his Teflon image in the face of nearly a decade of public abuse of the flesh claims. When people became more interested, he quickly responded on Twitter from his page, telling people to go ahead. Soon after, the tweet was taken down because of many memes that made references to the accusations against Cosby. Following this, in 20014, after the claims came up again, Wendy Williams remembered talking about the intimate attack claims against him that were in the tabloid National Enquirer in 1996 on her radio show. According to her, he told her boss to fire her while the show was rolling. No new claims of assault. The public learned through these that 11 women, including model Janice Dickinson, actress Louisa Moritz, Florida nurse Therese Sirenese, Playboy playmates Valentino and Sarita Butterfield, actress Michelle Hurd, and others had accused Cosby of assaulting them between 1965 and 1994. After journalist Joan Tarshis brought Hannibal's case to light, bring comments to light. After cutting ties with her friend, Charlotte Laws wrote an article for Salon in November 2014 in which she accused Bill Cosby of abusing her. In a piece for Vanity Fair the following month, Model Beverly Johnson said that she and other women she knew had told police that Cosby had doped them during an interview in 1986. The Sentence In a statement released by his lawyer, it said, In part, Mr. Cosby does not intend to dignify these allegations with any comment. The statement also said that Janice's testimony was different from how she had previously described the encounter. 
In a later statement, the claims were called false and a usual example of the media making things worse. The comment that came out a few days ago wasn't about Constan's case because it happened years ago. In order to be clear, it was a joint statement from Bill and Andrea, who had gotten money in 2006. Sindra Ladd said that Bill Cosby was forcing her to fall asleep and sexually abusing her in January 1995, in the year 1996. At some point in May 2015, police in Atlantic City, New Jersey, asked Lily Bernard about the sexual attack claims she had made against him in the early 1990s. People in the media said it wasn't clear if what Lily said happened in New Jersey was true. She hoped that. Because New Jersey does not have a statute of limitations for coital attack, the person would be charged. The cover of New York Magazine from July 27, 2015, showed 35 women sitting in chairs, with one chair empty, which suggested that there were more victims who weren't there or couldn't be found. 350 women talked about how Bill Cosby had hurt them, and the society that chose not to hear. 11 other women who knew New York and had accused him of hitting them refused to be interviewed or photographed for the story. Voices of America says the stories are very similar and go back more than 50 years. Usually the comic offers a woman a cup of coffee or an alcoholic drink that may have been spiked. With illegal drugs and reportedly assaulting the victim in a sexual way while she is high or unconscious. In the 2015 AE documentary Cosby the Women Speak, 13 women who say they were victims of his were interviewed. The show aired on September 17, 2015. Up until October 24, nearly 60 women had said that Cosby had abused them sexually. They often called him a psycho and a serial rapist. In fact, Jewel Allison specifically talked about he was possibly the worst serial killer in American history and got away with it for the longest time. He got away with it even more because he was pretending to be Cliff Huxtable. With so many crimes being linked to him and his name being one of the most well-known in the world, how did he remain silent for so long? The shocking level of Hollywood's involvement some say that. Some people think that Hollywood is a safe place for lefties. But the truth is that it's only interested in making money and not making progress. There is only one bottom line in Hollywood. Even though the town's most powerful man is a known abuser, he is safe as long as he's making money for other people. Imagine more than 30 women, over the course of at least 40 years, crying out in public to have been intimately assaulted by one guy, and each story had a clear pattern. However, nothing was ever really done. Why? Because people are so loyal to Bill Cosby's image, the first thing that comes to mind is probably to doubt the women's stories. Who are they? Why did they wait so long to come forward? And why did they do this? The reason was easy to see on TV. The bad guys always lose and the good guys always win. Fans of movies and TV shows always root for the good guys because we can connect to their struggles and admire their courage. To American audiences, he was the perfect example of the perfect TV hero. Many people don't have a father figure in their lives. Dr. Huxtable and commercial images work together to make them into the father they always dreamed of having. So it makes sense that his fans would try to defend him by casting doubt on the people who are accusing him. Not often do you come across monsters that don't look like monsters. He asked an interesting bad guy to help him. Whole business based on his horrible sexual crimes. If Bill Cosby were real, he would be more at home in a Shakespeare play than in a 30-minute situation comedy. It is called a criminal business if there are more than 30 victims. His protected position as a worker is like that of a mob member. And in the same way, the... Once he stopped being a bankable person, the claims would always be there. A lot of his plans for the future went down the drain after more than a dozen women came forward. 
Frank Scotty, a former NBC worker and friend, told the Daily News that he paid women to do things for the comic in the 1980s. While Frank wasn't the only one who knew what was going on but did nothing, he was at least one of them. Nothing and, in the worst case, gave young girls to the family-friendly scam. Once the TV viewers got over their original shock and realized that he has raped many women, the next part became even more disturbing. It means accepting the fact that some people in a respected and loved business helped, supported, and gained from him. It looks like no one thought to stop it because a few models were hurt when they could have made more money that way. These women were intimately assaulted, and then they were targeted in a plan to keep other intimate attack survivors from speaking out. Not the legal system, but the Hollywood machine kept the train going. But whether he is charged or not, a company that doesn't care about young women will always see them as things to use to become famous. Because these charges were so serious, Bill had to ask an old friend to help you keep quiet. According to papers that were gotten from reliable sources, Bill Cosby talked about how he felt about the ways he seduced women. He paid his talent agency back for the $5,000 it gave to his woman so that his wife wouldn't find out about the affair. This came from the time Andrea Constance sued him, saying he had hurt her, raped her while she was asleep. He denied what she said and claimed that they had agreed to what was happening. Instead of giving money from his foundation, he told his wife that he was going to pay Andrea's fees with a personal check because he wanted to help someone. His statement said that his wife would not know it was because they had sex and that she was now very being upset and that she had made up her mind to go to school. Reports say he talked in great depth about how he had his agent give the Syrianese money. Instead of telling his wife about his secret, he said he paid back the $5,000 the agency had given her. Under oath, he stated that he had gotten qualudes for fun. He even thought that his doctor knew he wasn't taking the pills to treat his back pain. For the claimed acts of intimate assault, he was asked to explain himself by. There are more than 20 women who have come forward to say they were victims. This group, Promoting Awareness Victim Empowerment, also asked President Obama at the time to take down his Presidential Medal of Freedom. The President said that because it had never been done before, there were no laws in place to cover it. In a statement to the media, the group said, The only reason Mr. Cosby settled because putting all those women on the stand and his family not knowing would have been embarrassing at the time. That would have been very hurtful. Long-term effects of his actions on his victims, when Andrea Constand first reported Bill Cosby for sexual misconduct in 2005, people were generally too lenient toward men abusing their power, fame, and influence. Assault on a close relationship. She has been fighting the law against him for almost 20 years and has testified against him in three trials, two of which were criminal and one civil. Her accusations were ignored. The first trial was called a mistrial. She was convicted, and then that conviction was overturned. She was called the Joan of Arc of the War on sexual abuse by both survivors and the media. She wasn't aware of it at the time, but she was the first person to openly accuse. He did something wrong. They met in 2002 when she was 29 years old and he was 65. He was a member of the school's executive board while she was the head coach of the women's basketball team at Temple University, Philadelphia, where she went to school. After going out for a year, they became friends. In 1995, she said that she was. After agreeing to spend the night at his place, she was knocked out and sexually assaulted. She remembered that she woke up during the attack and then fell asleep again. The effects were terrible, and her family and friends saw a very different person. It took her a whole year to get the nerve to speak out. Andrea told Cosmopolitan UK that he was in the news for a long time and she even won prizes after her case with him.
Even though he lost his honors after being found guilty, his business kept going strong. She had a lot to say about what attack of the flesh really does to survivors and their families by the time she was 50. Many of his victims have told stories about how he knocked people out and made friends with them, which shows a clear pattern. Finally found guilty, he was given a prison term of 3 to 10 years in 2018 on three counts. Andrea is being charged with aggravated indecent abuse. This shocked everyone in the Me Too movement. Fortunately, he is now free to go because of a mistake in the process that overturned his conviction and let him out of jail early in 2001. Before you can understand what the violation is all about, you need to go back to 1996. In that same year, Andrea sued him in civil court. The prosecutor and the accused later came to a deal that would give him immunity. So even though he admitted in his deposition that he had made women unconscious for sexual purposes, he agreed to be a part of that civil case as long as he wouldn't be charged with a crime. As a formal right, a technicality, or a loophole, you could call it that. In the U.S., unlike the U.K., there is a statute of limitations that says how long someone has to report a crime. Because of this, there are fewer chances of charging him with a crime. A number of court cases. Since then, many charges have been made against the former comedian. One from 2002 showed that he sexually assaulted a 16-year-old girl at the Playboy Mansion in 1975. Bill Cosby was in the news for a long time after she sued him, and he even won a few awards during that time. There are stories about hotel rooms and boardrooms, and people offer them money and fame. Since the Me Too movement started in 2017, a lot of accusations have been made against people. More scary are the threats of ruined jobs and reputations. Not long into Andrea's own fight, there were many accusations made against Harvey Weinstein a former Hollywood producer who was found guilty of rape. But the survivors' points of view haven't been heard enough, even though they are aware of the power systems that let many abusers get away with it, work for a long time without any problems. In a film, she is shown with Dona Spear, Lise Lot Lublin, and Renita Cheney Hill, who were also victims of Bill Cosby. Together, they talk about the effects of trauma and how hard it is to speak out after telling their horrible stories. Not long ago, another woman who was abused by Bill named Stacy Pinkerton told the news media that she thought the other women should get together. They saw that in cases like this, the focus is mostly on the criminal and not on the actual victims. It's hard to see their names, faces, and the battles they go through to stay alive and change things for the better in the big picture. A moving part of the video is when she thinks about how the event changed her. The Andrea who came into his house was different from the one who left. Since then, nothing has been the same for her because of what happened. The case against him, which lasts about an hour and a half, shows how the so-called crimes of a man had an effect on many people. The movie doesn't talk about his past as a beloved performer who was kindly known as America's dad because that's not what the movie is about. Also, it doesn't matter how many times that story has been told, it was just the mask he put on. Instead, it follows five survivors as they work with the famous Canadian Dr. Gaber mate to deal with their pain and bust myths about how survivors of sexual assault can heal. Should do something along with talks with the victims and emotional moments from the survivors the film also includes analyses from psychologists prosecutors and andrea's family people did everything they could to hurt her reputation by calling her a con artist and a cash digger the truth was all she had and that was her strength it has been really hard for the women but saying Getting back up has been a big part of their rebuilding process. During both criminal trials, Andrea kept speaking out even though his friends, defense lawyers, and the media all tried to hurt his reputation. Even though a lot of progress has been made in having these talks, 
and giving victims the tools they need to speak out, Hollywood still doesn't care about what its favorite stars do. Giving awards and fair spots to those who are accused. People who claim famous men are rarely treated with kindness, and the company is happy to ignore their bad behavior, as we have seen over and over again. Andrea and Stacy have had a harder time with the process because of his fans and support. CNN got the word out about a program called See It Loud, The History of Black Television and Stacy makes claims that Bill is still in the van. In July 2001, Stacy Pinkerton was at a rally for survivors to demand that Bill Cosby's conviction be overturned. Both women have made it their life's work to stop the criminal justice system from using women who have been sexually assaulted as weapons. In their present jobs, they both fight for the rights of survivors and want to change the law in the U.S. so that consent is clearer. This work has been very important for Andrea to stay afloat. What is the Me Too movement? The flood of women's testimonies that followed created an environment that made victims feel safe enough to come forward, which eventually led to Bill's conviction. She says this is the real success story, even though his conviction was overturned after only two years in jail. Because of Me Too, people are taking more responsibility now. She said that systems have been hurting people for a very long time, but now people are starting to see the truth in the Laws are becoming different. They want other survivors to speak out too, no matter how hard it may seem. They say that it is the combined effect of survivors speaking out that may bring about real change. Constan says that the most important thing is for someone to feel strong enough to say, this happened to me and then stand up. This person could be a boy, a girl, or a child. Being brave and speaking out against any kind of injustice. Not hiding what's going on because you're afraid to talk about it. The two women hope that their film and other work will show that every story has more than one side. That she got through it and is now living the life of her dreams is. Proof that you can do anything. It went from being a bad thing to a good thing thanks to her. In addition, she prays that other people who are still silent will soon come forward. The most important things are to find a group of people who can help you and know that you're not going through this alone. What does the people think about Bill Cosby now that everything is over? What's left of his broken legacy? What was once a great memory that should be remembered has not turned into an a well-known person to avoid. The judicial system sees Bill Cosby as a violent offender who has been convicted of a crime. Still, his Hollywood star on Sunset Boulevard seems to be the only thing left of his once glorious past. His star will still be on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, even though dozens of women have come forward to say that the actor and comic made them feel unconscious and beating them up. Along the Hollywood Walk of Fame are the names of famous people from the past and present. The famous Walk of Fame is run by the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce. They said that once the stars are put in place, they will become an indelible part of the Walk of Fame, turning it into a marked historic cultural landmark that will stay in place forever. The The only things the stars honor are the recipient's work accomplishments. The Hollywood Chamber of Commerce will not take stars off the Walk of Fame, even though it's sad when their private lives don't live up to public standards. A CNN station called KABC said that a letter asking the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce to take down Cosby's star had been sent out by the Urban Policy Roundtable in Los Angeles. It was in 1997 that he was given a star, and the 6,930 Hollywood Boulevard Medal and Terrazzo Landmark has been through a lot since then. In four years, the star has been vandalized many times, and the words serial rapist were spray-painted across his star. The fact that his name isn't the only one that's been smashed on Hollywood sidewalks might be the only thing that makes him feel better. Since Donald Trump ran for office, his star has also been damaged more than once. 
In one case, a street artist covered Trump's star with bars that looked like jails. Two months later, police said they had arrested a man for reportedly smashing the star with a pickaxe. What do you think about these new ideas? Share your thoughts in the box below. Thanks for seeing. Click play on the movie you want to watch to see more fun ones. Also, don't forget to hit the bell, like, and follow so you know when a new video comes out.